The word infinitesimal comes from a 17th century modern Latin word, infinitesimus, which originally referred to the infinite item in a series. While I was studying engineering, infinitesimals were used to express the idea of objects so small that there is no way to measure them, to see them. But since I entered the design world, my notion of what is infinitesimal changed. I experienced and I became more and more interested in the power of what is small and invisible. Thinking about the importance of understanding the story that a little entity can tell us. Revealing that story is a way of capturing the invisible. It is a way of capturing the significance of what we can easily consider insignificant. So today I want to talk about my journey of discovering the invisible ocean that flows in a grain of wheat. In 1995, Ismail Sirajuddin, vice president of the World Bank, famously prophesied, if the wars of this century were fought over oil, the wars of the next century will be fought over water, unless we change our approach to managing this precious and vital resource, he added. Well, I read these words 11 years later, in 2006, and they literally dragged me into the invisible and unknown reality of the water crisis. At that time, I was attending my last year of my two-year MA in communication design in London. I was specializing in information design. And I was about to choose the subject for my final year project on which I would spend 12 months. And I felt the urgent need to rush headlong into the subject of the water crisis. I really wanted to understand the reasons behind that bold statement from the World Bank. So I focused my attention on the United Nations World Water Development Report, which was the most official report in relation to the water crisis. And I tell you, it has been incredibly difficult to go through the 500 pages report, very dense, so very detailed information about the state of freshwater resources, the challenges of governance, the ecosystem. And the title, A Shared Responsibility, sounded an illusion very soon. It was clear that the report was addressed to the few on the inside of the water sector. But I thought, if the reasons for the water crisis lie in everyone's life, shared responsibility, general awareness will never be possible as long as the information is not accessible for a non-technical audience. And I believe that information design can play a unique role in that direction in order to democratize knowledge in order to explain complexity and facilitate understanding. The first five months of my journey were entirely spent on researching and studying in order to navigate this immense and complex new world. I knew that I had to master the content to design it. So the research was essential and I've learned many things. I have learned that water is the building block of the living cell. It is the medium of life. In fact, water is where all the biochemical reactions that guarantee life take place. I've learned that water is the building block of the human body. It is our basic ingredient. It flows in the vessels of our body. Without water, we would not be able to move nutrients around it. We would be dead very, very quickly. I've learned that water is the building block of our planet our blue planet. 30% of the world's surface is covered with land, 70% is covered with water, but almost all of that, 97.5%, is salty. Of the remaining 2.5, most is locked up in ice, glacier, and permafrost, so only a small fraction is available for use. And I've learned the difference between blue water and green water. Blue water is in rivers, streams, lakes, underground pools, it can be drunk and pumped. Green water is hidden in soil, trees, plants. It is invisible, but really, really important, because it raises around 70% of all our food. But the big surprise arrived when I discovered that all the water that exists on Earth today already existed when the planet was first formed. It is a fixed quantity, a finite amount. 
but it tirelessly moves thanks to an extraordinary miracle powered by the sun and called hydrological cycle. So water goes up, it is evaporated from land and oceans by the sunset to form clouds, and then it goes back to earth as a snow and rain, and it replenishes the rivers, the lakes, the underground pools, the oceans, and the cycle keeps going on and on and on, every day, every hour, every minute. This miracle guarantees life on the planet, This miracle moves water across thousands of miles and in volumes that, as an engineer, I can only marvel at. So water is a fixed quantity, but it moves through an endless cycle. It is renewable, but limited. And I have learned that while water is limited, population is not. Population has no limits. It has grown by four billions in the last 60 years, and we are growing bigger and thirstier, and the pace at which we are using our freshwater resources is much faster than the pace at which these resources can be replenished through the hydrological cycle. Water is not evenly distributed on the planet. So the challenge is having sufficient water of the right quality at the right place at the right time. And I kept digging for months. I read books about the privatization of water where I was continuously reminded that every human being has the right to have access to safe drinking water. I studied the molecular properties of water and the chemical structure of the hydrogen bond, and I realized its uniqueness. And the proportions of the hydrogen bond allowed me to set the proportions of everything I would design later on. And I was faced with the uncomfortable statistics related to the access to safe drinking water. So... I was sailing an ocean of information with no specific route. After a period of five months, I decided to stop. I had to decide what I wanted to say to the world. And I thought, if the reasons for the water crisis lie in everyone's life, does everybody know how we use this precious source of life? Is there any general awareness? So this is the question I wanted to answer visually. How much water do we use? And how do we use it? And the answer to that question is called the water footprint, which is an indicator of water use based on research carried out by UNESCO in the University of Twente in the Netherlands. And I was so lucky, because a very short paragraph in the UN report allowed me to plot my course. I found something that was extraordinary to me, because it was about making visible the invisible. The idea behind the water footprint is that we use loads of water for drinking, cooking and washing, but even more for producing things such as food, paper, cotton, clothes. So the water footprint of a nation is a measure of the national water that is used for all the domestic needs of the inhabitants, plus the national water that is used to produce the food and commodities that are used by the inhabitants. But we must not forget the foreign water that is used abroad to produce the food and products that are imported and consumed by the inhabitants. So knowing the water embedded in the products we use is crucial in order to measure the water footprint. And the concept, the indicator of the water footprint, is based on the idea of virtual water, termed coined by water expert Professor Tony Allam. The virtual water product is defined as the amount of water that is used to produce that product, considering the whole production history of the product. It is a way of capturing the invisible in order to become aware of the water resources that are used in the production chain. And that amount is huge. Consider pork. In an industrial pig farming system, we need 10 months before the pig is slaughtered. And during these 10 months, the pig consumes grains, and we have previously used water to produce those grains. The pig consumes water for drinking. We need to take into account the water for servicing the farmhouse, for, for cleaning processes, and for slaughtering processes. So at the end of the 10 months, we have used 540,000 liters of water to produce, on average, 90 kilos of pork meat, which means 6,000 liters of water to produce one kilo of pork meat. Now, thanks to the extraordinary work of modeling done by the researchers at the Water Footprint Network, I had access to precious data. And I realized that there is an ocean that flows in everything we eat, 
we wear, we drink, we sell, we buy. So this is the ocean that flows in a kilo of wheat, 1,830 liters of water. This is the ocean that flows in a t-shirt made of cotton. 820 liters for one kilo of apple. 3 million, 850,000 liters for a cow, which is on average 15,400 liters for one kilo of beef. Now, can you visualize 15,400 liters of water? I had some problem. So this is a liter water bottle. So this is 1,000 liters. This is 15,400 liters, which is a wall of 24 meters by 13 meters. So I learned that water is the building block of the living cell, that water is the building block of the human body, that water is the building block of our planet, and that water is the building block of our food. It is vital to food production. So if we are at the top of the food chain, well, water is down at the bottom. And if the bottom wobbles, the top falls. So the concept of virtual water allowed me to look at the products in a totally different new way, not anymore as the final step of a production process, but as containers that contain all the water that has been used to produce them. But what does it mean? It means that when we consume and trade products, we consume and trade virtual water. So the import-export of food and commodities can be imagined as an invisible network of virtual water flows across countries and continents. And understanding these virtual water flows can help us in managing water more effectively. This is the question that we are interested in. How much water do we use? According to the Water Footprint Network, this is the number that represents the global water footprint of humanity. 9,087 million million liters per year used by all of us on the planet. How big is that number? It's really hard to understand what to do with a number, a number that size. So if we took, again, a liter water bottle, and if we laid down that number of them, they would more than cover all the land surface on the planet, more than all the continents. But let us look more closely. This number is referred to a global population of 6.6 .6 billion people, which means that the water footprint for each one of us is 1,385,000 liters per year, which means 3,800 liters per day for each one of us. And this is how 3,800 liters per day look like, a wall of 8 meters by 10 meters, where 3.6% goes towards domestic use. Every time we directly interact with water for cleaning, cooking, washing. So every time we brush our teeth, every time we have a shower, every time we wash our car, that's domestic use. 4.4% is due to the production of the industrial products we consume. And 92% is due to the production of the food we consume. 92% of our water footprint is hidden in our food. So I realized that I eat a lot of water, but I'm totally blind to its presence, to its value, to its environmental cost. Water is worth it, and not just for drinking, water is food. So saving water at home is really, really important. But we have to start thinking about what we eat and how we produce what we eat if we want to have a real impact. So there are two key agents. First one, the farmers. 92% of our water use is for food production, and every last drop is managed by the world's farmer. They can use water productively, and they can be really good water resource stewards. Second agent, consumers, meaning you and me. We consumers and our food choices determine how much water is diverted into food production. Our food preferences, the amount of meat in our diet, our tendencies to waste food, these are all things that can have a massive impact on the pressure we put on our water resources. We hold the key to water security. We are influential, we really are. I often got lost in data during this 12-month journey, 
lost in tables of numbers expressed in cubic meters. And I often thanked God for my degree in engineering that allowed me to understand where all those numbers came from. And I have learned that numbers can be slippery. They can hide uncertainty. They can be based on assumptions. But if we use them wisely, we can get much wiser. Often I had to bother the water scientists because I wanted to make sure that I was processing the information in the right way. I had to recognize my limits and I had to thank the water scientists because from them I received precious explanations and advice on how to structure, organize and present the data in a more functional way. I experienced the power of collaboration, the power of dialogue. And this is me at 4 a.m. after one of my data analysis sessions. And this picture still today reminds me how far I can push my limits when I get really passionate about something. This journey made me a more conscious and responsible user, but it also made me think about the importance of science and the importance of communicating science. Information is powerful only if it can be understood because it is the power of understanding that can bring about change. And being passionate about that has been the drive, the engine, along my journey. I stand on the shoulders of many giants today, and one is water expert, Professor Tony Allen. At one point, he invited me because he wanted to see the result of my thesis, this 900 pages book where um, through diagrams and pictures and drawings and photographs and text, I visualized all the research I went through. And after a couple of hours we spent on the maps, he started seeing visual patterns for countries and continents. And that was a celebration of how useful images can be. And he asked me if he could use those images in his presentations around the world. And I thought, wow, this is exactly what I wanted. And that day, before I left, I asked him, Professor Allen, where is the solution? And, and he answered, Angela, once we understand the water truly, we will be able to use it wisely. Awareness of the concept of virtual water will not provide a magic answer to the world's water problems, but it can point society in some useful directions. It can help us in understanding our role, and that understanding is vital. And he said, Knowledge and will can make change happen. Thank you very much.